you know, uh, I used to do a routine about Mickey Rooney. Mickey Rooney uh, went with my ex-wife, and uh, I said to, used to tell the audience that Mickey Rooney goes with my ex-wife, and I says, I used to see him on the screen, and I used to say to myself, I always wish I could do what he you know, is doing, and I just found out he's doing what I did. So, <laughs> but it, it, you know. Um, you know, when Peter Lawford first went to Hollywood, he lived in a motel with his mother, right at the edge of Mickey Rooney's property. Mickey Rooney was the biggest star of MGM, and Peter Lawford was just starting. And he used to, he could hear Mickey Rooney's fancy car coming down through the estate. And if he'd be walking out to go to the lot, he'd hide behind the bushes because he was so embarrassed, like, you know, where he was living, you know, like the poorest of the poor. I mean, that's, an, that's interesting because, you know, not many people, uh, Sonny was telling me about Peter Lawford and playing with Durante and stuff. And people really don't even know that Peter Lawford was a movie star or anything, but, but he was a very big movie star. And he very and, big. And he and Sinatra were very competitive in the old days, especially uh, at Why? MGM, because Peter Lawford had dated Ava Gardner. Oh, I didn't know that. And he had also had an enormous you affair with, with little Lana tidbits. With Lana Turner. You know I think, I think, you want to know it's funny, you were mentioning women that uh, quite a few people have had, you know, affairs with. Um, I, I find it hard to believe did you watch these beautiful women on the screen, that they were that easy. I mean, guys like Artie Shaw went and knocked off uh, Ava Gardner, Lana Turner, Bustav Ajala, Evelyn Keith. I mean, it's just, it was like nothing. Uh, or you these know, young... You know who told me why that was? Why? That little the four foot uh, uh, ten uh, dynamo, Lillian Burns Sidney, who was married to George Sidney and signed all of them and was the drama coach. She made Ava, I, I did a whole show on her. She made Ava Gardner, Lana Turner, all of them. She was the drama coach. She signed everybody for Louis B. Mayer. But what did she teach them? I mean, would she tell she, she said that the reason that they were to so To give out their telephone numbers or what? Well, no, she said the reason they were so vulnerable was that they were picked from photographs and screen tests and they had no acting skills. And then she would teach them just enough so that they could be their aura, that Ava could just be Ava. Not, you know, uh, playing all these different roles, but she could just be Ava Gardner, and Lana Turner could be Lana Turner. Yeah, that's what and, a star was in those days. Yeah, and they never, they, they were so insecure that they never really knew why they were even there, other I mean, than something to do with the way they looked. Johnny Stampanato, I mean, I just, it's, it's frightening. I mean, there's a woman who married uh, Dan Topping, you know, stay married, there's a guy's a billionaire, to be happy. And if you're not happy, let him sleep in another bedroom, but not schmaltzing around there. That's, you know, that stooping around is... Uh, Janet Lee went out with John Stampanato. Janet Lee went out with Howard Hughes. Yeah, he, he asked me out one time, too, I think. I think he was a horny guy. He was doing something else. I mean, he was out with everyone in the world, right? I mean... You see, that's another thing we're talking about, the fear. That was the position. These people fell in love with the that he is there, and he's and he can make me. And how bad do you want a career? Or how bad do you want to do anything? I just, I never, uh, so I can't understand, I never had that drive. I have never had that drive. What was the first date you ever played? First date I ever played? Yeah, you mean my high school well, date? Or what? No. The first gig you ever got? Well, the first thing that I did professionally for $10 was working for the uh, Arbiter Ring, which is the worker circle a Jewish organization, probably communist. And uh, I went, I did a couple of dialect jokes and I sang a song. Um, and after the performance, I went to this man who gave me the $10 and I said, did you like it? He says, I want to tell you something, the chicken was better. So I, the name of my book is gonna be The Chicken Was Better. Uh, my first jobs, it, it's really amazing because I never had trouble with the first jobs. It's the only one that I ever had, and they were so good to me, was this one I told you about with the $10. And they were very good to me. They protected me long after I left that place. And I went to work at the Chez Paris when I wasn't ready. I went to work at the Copacabana in New York, and I hated it. It wasn't for me. And uh, they couldn't fire me, and I never knew that. They were told by the higher Frank Sinatra's friends not to fire me. Julie Podello used to talk like this. 
He used to hit the table with a ring, you know? And uh, when you hit the table with the ring, you're supposed to stop what you were doing. And uh, I never took his, you know, his stuff. And the people couldn't understand. He said, you're not frightening me. I said, no, why should I be frightening you? What, what are you going to do, hit me? I mean, I could have killed him. But uh, I think fear, I had fear by myself on the stage. I was always in fear on the stage. But not fear with to be frightened of a Sinatra or a boss or this, because you could walk away from these people. But I watched the biggest stars, and I mean the biggest, when Frank, they've just, they, they become rugs. For him to step on. Frank's, Frank's coming. He ought to be here in seven hours. Let's get ready. You know, it's just it's frightening. And I don't think Sinatra. And if he ever hears this, Sinatra never wanted that. He wanted inside. He wanted everybody to be his mother, Dolly. His mother, who was the greatest lady in the world, used to say to him, "Cut it out!" And bada boom boom. And he listened. That little boy listened. And I think that's the ability Barbara's got, his wife now. I think she's got the ability to say, cut it out. When, is there any footage of your uh, nightclub, you performing in a nightclub? Do you know of anybody who has any that I could put into the show? Yeah, I think there's some stuff around. Because I don't know. I'd love to do that. You know, there's a... It, your style was not like insulting people like Don Rickles or no. like Jerry Lewis. So no. you, didn't, you never got into that kind of... You know, there's, there's I very... insulted the bosses. I insulted authority, uh, not the not the public ever, but authority. Yes, I would talk. Uh, uh, I would not do like a Jackie Mason because when Jackie Mason starts knocking the president, I, I had a thing with him in Florida. I almost killed him. He didn't know why, but you know, hey, I'll tell you the truth. Clinton is this, and Clinton is that. Did you see uh, what's her name, Paula Jones? This guy not only is deaf, he's blind too. Hey. This is the way it means. He just talked to this story in the New Yorker that just came out on Sinatra, and Sonny King told me yesterday, it's absolutely the truth, that Sinatra hated Jackie Mason so much. He had said something to him once that Jackie Mason, a couple of days later, was, it doesn't matter. Let me tell you what happened. She was out of the business, and she was frightened uh, to do anything. So I took her. <laughs> Cappy, please, I beg of you, finish. <laughs> finish, Cap. Cappy, finish. Yes, ma'am. So I brought her with me to Chicago. And I stayed on the stage, and I held her hand. And uh, she was wonderful. Many years later, when I was having nervous breakdowns and everything, I got out of show business for a long time. I went back to the Desert Inn, and she was sitting there, and she held my hand. And it was, um, wasn't tit for tat. It was hand for hand at that time. But that's what people that like each other do for each other, you know? And that's why I wanted her, because I thought there are very few women who belong in this show. But she does. You know, sure, if we had Martha Ray or people like that, but of the people who are living, she's one of the few women, I think, that was really in that scene. You know? Yeah, and she's a, she's a wonderful lady. If you talk about Martha Ray, it's very interesting, because I work with Martha Ray. Martha Ray was not a nightclub performer. You're talking about nightclubs. Martha Ray was a... Um, was a legitimate performer, and she was also a band singer, but um, she would take things from Milton Berle. She did the Benio singers, the thing that Milton Berle did. She, she was a good mimic. She would take things from different people to, to make up her uh, nightclub act. I remember because she would bring in young comics like myself, and whatever we would do, she would take little things. I used to do a French routine. The second time I worked with her, I said, you don't do your French routine. I say, what do you mean? You don't mind to do my French routine? Now Martha's doing that, you know. So consequently, Martha to me was never a nightclub performer. But didn't she have quite a Vegas life in those days, like Toby Fields? And, I mean, no. Oh, no, I thought she did. 